Hey guys, it's Linux next year, and today's video we are going to be learning how to set up virtual surround sound on Linux. As I know that there was a viewer of mine who had been setting up virtual surround sound from a particular video, and he was like, "Hey, maybe you should do a tutorial on it. Maybe explain a bit more of like maybe what's going on." So I learned it for a couple days and then set up on my own setup, and now I'm going to teach you how to set it up. So usually on Linux we have a audio system called Pipewire. If you don't know what that is, we just like search it up or go to the Pipewire website, it says it is a project that aims to greatly improve handling of audio and video under Linux. It provides a low latency graph based processing engine on top of audio and video devices that can be used to support the use cases currently handled by both Pulse Audio and Jack. If you don't know, Pulse Audio is the old audio system that we used to use. And now we've basically created an extra package called, I think it's called Pipewire Pulse, which it translates Pulse Audio to Pipewire so that we don't have to use Pulse Audio fully. Pipewire was designed with a powerful security model that makes interacting with audio and video devices from containerized applications easy with support for flatback applications being the primary goal. Alongside Wayland and Flatbank, we expect Pipewire to provide a core building block for the future of Linux application development. So that's what Pipewire is. It does basically two things, audio and video. So how do you set up virtual surround sound on Linux? Well, basically, there is this filter chain. Think of this of kind of like a template for enabling virtual surround sound on your own Pipewire audio system. And you can easily find one on the Pipeware GitLab repo. So I'm going to link this down below where you can easily grab it. And before we do that, what we have to do is go to our root directory, go to user, share, and find the Pipewire folder. You want to copy the pipewire.config file and you want to paste it in uh, .config and create a folder called Pipewire. And then after you create the folder, you want to paste the pipewire.config in this folder. Then when we open up this config file, we want to find the context.module. Uh, if you just scroll like up to here, if we just scroll down, we just keep scrolling, keep scrolling, context modules. And we find this little bracket here. We want to keep scrolling till we find the other bracket that closes that code that, that is there. So as you can see, here is the bracket and that's where it ends. So what we want to do is we want to click enter to make a little space here. And we want to copy this whole area. So actually you don't want to copy the whole thing. You just want to copy this bracket here and go all the way down till we hit, I think here. We want to copy it and then we want to paste it in this line here. So after this is done, we can hit save. And the next part is we need to grab a .wav, I like to call it wave, even though there's no E on it, uh, a .wav file for the virtual surround sound. So there is this website called Airtable and you can grab different uh, .wav uh, files for different virtual surround sounds. You can just test it out. The one that I've been using for the past couple of days has been the Dolby Atmos one. So I would definitely grab this. And the thing is you can use virtual surround sound on literally any hardware. Of course, if you have like speakers or something, it's not going to be able to do it unless the speakers are like able to be all around you so you can actually get the proper 7.1 virtual surround sound like for example i put it on my iams and they sounded actually pretty good so i would definitely test this out if you have any type of headphone just to see if you enjoy virtual surround sound because it's pretty trippy i would say after enabling it and especially playing in games it can be sometimes an advantage depending on the headphones so you just want to download the .wav file right here and then you want to copy and paste it into the pipewire in the dot config slash pipewire folder then what we want to do is copy the directory of this and then after we paste this into the document which would be right here what we have to do is we have to paste it in each line so like i said we paste that directory or whatever your directory is and mine's home slash prolix slash dot config slash pipewire then do another slash and then the name of the actual file which is atmos.wav so you have to continue copying and pasting this line onto each one make sure that these quotation marks are included and after you've done that you can hit save and the next part is well you can just restart your computer and you should have a virtual surround sound made in your settings of whatever desktop environment that you're using so for me it's right here i can click to enable it and then you can test out different music if you want to or play a specific game and you should be able to tell the difference or you can just do a test here and 
it does work quite well for me, I would say. Like this rear right sounds like it's coming from the rear right. And same with rear left or the side left. I can tell the difference between that. So definitely give it a try if you, you know, want to try out virtual surround sound. You can try different .wav files to see which one you like. For me, I think Dolby Atmos is perfectly fine. It seems to do the job, but there is plenty of others. There's uh, the DTS, there's the A3D, there's the Steam Audio also. That's one you can try. And you know, I would say that personally, this is kind of easier than on Windows. I mean, on Windows, I guess you use the um, application from the headphones that you got. So it'd be like Razer Synapse or something, and then it would just apply the effects to your headphones. But this is pretty easy. Like, after you've done doing this, since the config is in your home folder, it doesn't matter if you do a bunch of updates, it will not overwrite or get deleted unless you delete it. Pretty good, I would say it's always going to be there. So if you guys enjoyed this short tutorial, I definitely would give it a like. You definitely can subscribe to the channel also. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a screenshot of them now. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.